Hey guys, we're celebrating that we finally got rid of the diabolical drive. It's out and then we're going to have a little bit of fun and we'll run what you brung. So what, what did you bring, Carl? <laughs> I brought a gift. It's something I had in my garage. It's an early launch analyzer from uh, 1975, I think. It's HP and then we have construction next door. Okay, so, so it makes noise. Pop the cover off. There it is. Ta da! So that's an early logic analyzer from the 1970s, right? right. So that's Mid probably the only TTL inside. We'll, we'll look at it later on. Hooks to an oscilloscope. This thing came complete. It has the probes. We got that little probes with it. And a whole uh, set of probes. You, you, you said you tried it. You think it works? Yes. And here it is from the catalog, and actually they had two instruments. It's only 16 bits, but uh, so the, the main instrument uh, has actually a screen in it, and this was the part you brought, Carl, can be used either on a standalone on a normal scope uh, or as an addition of 16 bit to the main instrument, which makes it 32 bits, and it has this. Oh, it makes those nice displays here. One being a weird vector display. Unfortunately, the unit we have cannot do this, but it just displays ones and zeros. Right? This is the very, very beginning of logic analyzers. So what's, what was the price on that thing? Um, $3,600 for the 16-channel in, 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 in 83. In fraction of an inexpensive car. <laughs> well... Mm. This is 83. I think it's obsolete by the time it's on that catalog. We should have gotten the We'd have to see the 70, 75 catalog, and, and it's probably way more expensive. So, we were going to use it with a regular scope, but we thought better and got the XY scope because it's all you need, right? XY and Z. And Z. Exactly. All right. And then this is just XY and Z input. I want to do it. Uh, I'll go on this instrument, you go on that one. So okay, so I'm giving you horizontal, so that's X. This that must be this one. Alright, let's try it. On. It's nice. I have to buy a toothbrush and a bunch of simple green to clean all of that horrible power supply. Okay, so I have my. Uh, yeah. My X, Y over here. Yeah. Yeah. This is working. Yeah. 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 The vertical amplifier has a bit of a problem on that one. <laughs> we have some construction going on. So this is not going to be good. Uh, right. Oh, I see zeros and ones. Oh, this is cool. Wow, big ones and zeros. We should be able to scale them a bit. Oh, it has bits in it. And we should be able to make it better by using blanking. Uh, uh, oh, there we go! Woohoo! Wow! This is pretty neat. So, this is pretty basic. This is paddles for tri triggering on a pattern, and then you have a clock input and. You can do positive and negative bits. Oh, that's fun. Let's try that. Positive, negative, octal. So you have paired with three bits. And that's positive, negative. And I can reset it. Oh, goes to zero. Okay. Is my collection of TTL chips. Actually, this is uh, more than TTL. This is HP uh, numbered 
parts. This is the original HP part with their wheel numbers. And down there I have the more usual TTL. And there should be a counter in there somewhere. One, this box. 191, there you go. Should get them right in here. So that is the counter in question. And it can even count up and down. How many bits? Four bits. Four bits. All right. Happy wiring, Ken. Okay, so I'm gonna wire this up and hopefully it will count. So basically, power and ground, uh, uh, disabling the loading, enabling the counting, and that should be that should about it. You connect the probes, which are actually active probes. They, they get quite warm, so there's some stuff happening in there. Six bits per probe, yeah. Oh, they're all numbered. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to remember the right position. It's only 16 bits. 16 yeah. by 16, right? So there is really nothing you can debug seriously about it, but it's pretty fast, it's 20 megahertz, right? And yeah, it's cute. So, so yeah, just some user error here. Oh, okay, we, we start to see some bits. It, it has a fascinating... Uh, Display to it, display quality to it. And this is without the Z blanking and do the Z blanking again. Oh, yeah, that's much better with Z blanking. Mm -hmm. So it's counting. And then we you have the awesome column blanking button. You can turn one. So this is the real interesting bits from the generator. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> going to have to end this because... You can show a single shot. Okay, right. do a single shot. Okay, so it freezes and you can see a thing and then let it run again. A single shot another time. So, and, and you can trigger... Are you triggering something special? Right, right. so we can set... Well, what number do you want to start with on the triggering? Pick, pick a number. One. Uh, start, start... Yeah, I don't know. We'll start on whatever you want. Oh, 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 one. So zero, 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 one. Okay. See, that's the first line up here. Yeah. So that's, that's a triggering condition, which is always a tough thing to do. So, in a, so, so be, be, in before, before, before you before you change that before you change that, I'll change it to count down. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? Um, I'm changing. I'm pulling one of the lines high here to switch the chip from counting up to counting down. Okay. And down. And then up. This is up. See? One, two, three, four. And Whereas the other way, when he pulls it off, it's one, zero, fifteen, right, right. fourteen. And, and these are the count, four counting bits, and this is something else? So this is the ripple carry, so you can connect multiple, multiple chips together okay. to get more okay. bits. And then the last one indicates when it hits the end, its limit. triggers at the end and it's the states leading up to it. Huh. Oh, you can do it in the... F okay. Is it you recording for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's the triggers at the top and it goes down. And what about the delay setting? Well, let's it's take a look at what that... Delay after trigger. Okay, so we've delayed two cycles after the trigger. It's cycles? Or before. Yes. Clock cycles. Can you switch it a bit so we see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make it move. So, so that's the trigger condition. And it's moving. Correct. So that's smart. Think. Darn construction. So, so you can delay a lot of cycles. Yes. And you can invert the bits. Yeah. So, so what about the qualifier? How does that work? So... I'm not sure where the qualifier signals get hooked in. Okay, so the qualifier channels allow only selected data to be captured, greatly expanding the effectiveness of the memory. In that you could also use that to trigger a scope, just to right. trigger a logic condition. Whenever it triggers, it'll also put the pulse out here, so you can fire scopes or other things. To where, where your glitch happens, it. right? right. On the, uh, and this can also be triggered by something else, so you have it not watch for its data until some signal comes in. So. 
you know, when your PC is doing such and such an instruction, it gets this thing triggered and then it right. locks on the... the beginning the of mixed signal uh, debugging. Looks like boring TTL logic to me. Yeah, it's not as spectacular as I. Uh, How many layers? Oh, as there's I a board underneath. So. Yeah, there's another board. Well, you can flip it. Oh, it's only two. Yeah, you can flip the whole thing. Okay, we've got more chips hitting on this board. Recognize any? It, and that's probably the little circuit to make the zero and the ones. There's probably a little oscillator in quadrature that does the zeros. You could turn these pots, see if the. Uh, yeah, I bet, I bet you that changed the shape of the zeros and the ones. <laughs> and look, we found Intel's first chip ever. This is actually uh, an Intel 3101. 64 bits of memory. Intel first product ever. And then Ken, you have the modern version of all this equipment fits into this little box? Yep. And this is a $12 USB logic analyzer, 8 channels off eBay. But only eight channels. Okay, I, I still channels. win on the number of channels, but ten bucks. Wow. Versus thirty-six hundred. And it so, so he, and it does the same thing. He, right? It's just running at a, a two hertz clock, so you can see see the transitions. Now, if we go up to um, twenty megahertz, actually, let's let's go to ten because okay. you can see it's all just kind of a blur until we zoom in. Um, but once we zoom in, we have a million samples here. You can see that because I'm only sampling at 24 megahertz, the uh -huh. 10 megahertz clock is looking kind of yeah, kind of ragged. Sad. If I increase the clock to 20 megahertz, um, the chip is still working, but my sampling is missing a few points. Okay. If we now go up to 22 megahertz, oh, you are, you are overclocking this poor TTL chip. So at 22 megahertz, you can see that the chip can now only only the first two outputs are working, and then it's just uh, dead after that. And T TTL is rated to so, 20. So I looked at the manual. It said typically it gets can get 25, but 20 is the maximum recommended. So it, this chip gets up to the recommended point and then, not, then kind of dies. Not anymore, right? Wow. It kind of chokes. I was curious to see if the old guy would actually stack up with the new guy and could measure as far as 20 megahertz. So here we have all set up and I let the numbers ripple. I could kind of fix them if I want it but then you cannot tell if it's counting or not. On top is frequency in megahertz. So it's at one meg. Let's go it a little faster. Here we go. It's rippling. Two meg. Three meg. Still counting. Four meg. Five meg. Six megs. Ten meg. Yep, I went too far. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is no problem capturing at 15 meg. 16, 17 meg, 18 meg, 19 meg, 20 meg. So the 1975 logic analyzer works as fast as the USB version of 2018. It'll cost a little bit more, of course. So let's see if uh, we observe the same results and the chip stops working at higher rates 21 still working 22 uh, crapped out it's not counting on the two upper bits but it's still logic analyzer is still doing it on the lower bits 
you can tell it uh, still uh, is acquiring the clock at 23 gigs. Actually, it would be interesting to see how far this goes. Whoop. 50 gig has problem. 50, no clock. Wow. It's a lot faster than I would have thought. Okay. So, hey, the old logicalizer, it needs more memory, but of course, uh, the Intel chips can tell me uh, the, the 64 bit chips that are in this. They used to cost $100 a chip when they were introduced. Because, but wow, it's, it's more impressive than I thought. It's,